Hey, how's it going? Let me give you my lesson on, um, whatchamacallit, um, the bi-weekly history test. This is the official, um, like, coming out ex explanation video for it, because uh, I did my first one last night, and I graded myself today, and I'm going to put it on the uh, internet now, and so this is the one that explains what it is. Um, it is, uh, this is, uh, the ticket to not have to go to school. Instead, you just do certain, you do very well on the bi-weekly and get really good, and then that makes it so that you could get accepted into any graduate program that you would ever want, like the final stages of, um, surgery or the PhD program of the history or the graduate final stages, you know, just jump right into the final stages without any all these 23 years of preamble um, of like um, law school, you know, engineering, you know, this is this is so that kids can drop out of school after the sixth grade and then not have to go back until they're 20 or 25 or whatever and they want to do just that final year of just fine tuning and then get some like degree from wherever to you know, the highest end stuff, you know, so this, because all education really now is just, uh, trying to, it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, the, um, elite overproduction. Um, now education is only about, um, whoever goes to school the longest, right? But then it turns into a game, well, how young can you get when you graduate? So then you graduate high school at 16, so you graduate college at 18, so you graduate, you get your master's by the time you're 20, and so that's supposed to mean you're some kind of a prodigy when it's really all it's fucking nepotism and paying them off. And So this is just a way to, because I was in school with an English degree with two summer sessions, and I didn't graduate until I was 23, and I, then I got kicked out of the education department. So, like, if you're like me, they'll just write in the notes, you know, like, kick this dude out and fuck with him and make him take stupid classes he doesn't have to take as long as, so we can get as much money out as you can. They, they just try to ruin your life. And so, so, and I know I'm not the only person who doesn't like sitting in school and wasting all their money on these. I went to Fort Loser College in Durango. And uh, so, but I mean, it's all bullshit. Boulder High, it's the same thing, bullshit. And then I got like rejected from CU because I guess the, because I dropped out of chemistry. What the fuck does chemistry have to do with actual education, which is only history? Because nobody knows history. So this is just go history. So there's my preamble. Now to describe what it is. I'm going to watch this again to create the different uh, chapters so you can just jump around. But um, So you have to prove that you know history and you have to study history. So the best way to do it is the bi-weekly. I call it the Fortnite test. Um, and I just did it last night. So for an hour, you just hit your uh, random number generator. From 0 to 200, I did the 80s because there's 200... Uh, um, decades and it tells you what decade and then you have a minute to just call out stuff that happened in the decade and at the end of it at the end of the minute you hit the random again and then it kills you another decade so you do it 60 times and um, you know you have to get something right uh, so what counts would be like who is the leader of a country during that decade but you can't just say that the country existed during that decade right because now you've got like 20 decades if you're going to say that the height of, like, you know, uh, curtsying or something was in the decades of the 560s, for example, but it was actually the 550s, then just because you're one decade off, that doesn't count. You have to get the decade right. Um, so close calls don't count. Um, you know, even if you're only one year off, you know, like if something happened in 1540, um, but and, and you, you say it happened in, in the 1530s and you're like, ah, whatever, 1539 is the same as 1540. No, you can't do that kind of um, rounding up either. Um, yeah, and it has a magical, I, I realize it has a magical way of uh, teaching you because you really learn when you grade yourself. And uh, so this way you don't need teachers to grade you because that's, that's how teachers get smart. Even if you have a stupid idiot psycho teacher, they can still get a little bit smart just from the repetitive grading of your, of your, of your grades and then pretend um, that they're smart. So the best thing to do is just to grade your own stuff because it'll make you smarter and then it'll, it'll let you know where your, uh, where your weakness is. Like I got a bunch of zeros on it. Um, 
and um, on my last one, I'm not gonna. This isn't a video about what it is, but anyway, I got. I think I scored a 154. So I got 154. I mentioned 154 things that happened from zero to 2,000 when you just give me a random um, decade. I knew in that decade, and that's and then I had a whole bunch of close calls. So I think I did really well on my very first one. It also lets you know, it, it tells you a whole, you're exposing a whole lot about yourself, which is what we want. The more exposure, the better for everybody because it all educates yourself about yourself, what your knowledge pushes you to learn more and then on um, each other. So, um, I, uh, um, it, it, you can learn about like how, how well you, good you are at following rules because you have to grade yourself. So. You know, if it turns out that somebody is always rounding up and down, well, you know that they're going to do that with life and you can't trust them because they don't even, can't even grade themselves correctly. You know, like if they, if they say that something happened in the 1220s, but it really happened in the 1230s, they knew that because you test it. And the really cool thing, so they just lied. So the cool thing about it, testing itself, is that uh, you can do it with ChatGTP, like immediately, you know. It's way faster than Googling or Wikipedia. So, um, and it also... Uh, it explains it really well, so it's a, a great read to refresh. So, um, so now you can have this, and so you do, people can compete with each other, and you can you can have a certain level and um, and to study on it. The best way to study learning history is by actually exercising. You can do it while you kickbox, lift weights, row, even swim these days, and ride bikes and everything. And so that's what I that's how I'm going to train my mind from now on I'm just gonna um, get on uh, ride a bike and exercise while I listen to history books and you know the recordings of the different um, decades because I have that on my uh, computer also my phone uh, and then to listen on Wikipedia and, and it, so to train so, so if you do it every two weeks you did the first of the month halfway through the month and then at the end of the month and so for that two weeks in between you have the time to grade yourself and to try to get better for the next one. And there's different ones. It's on my uh, Fortnite history test on my website. I'll put the link below. But you have AD, which I did yesterday. You have the 20th century, uh, 1900 to 2000. Um, and then you have, maybe I'll make a 21st century. <laughs> then you have, so that's two. Then you have BC. And then there could even be a future, you know. Maybe I'll say future. Um, but then you have ancient uh, history as well. So there's like five of them. <laughs> So you can stagger taking the tests. So um, this um, will save the world because now everybody teaches themselves so you can go to school. So all the money you spend on school you can then put into the robots that travel around and plant the trees which create the forests, which bring the clouds, which replenish all of the lakes. Like bringing lake salt, uh, the Great Salt Lake back up to snuff. Which then makes the rivers bigger, fills up the dams easier and can help have a bigger population with more biodiversity and more oxygen and take care of global warming. Uh, but you can't afford to do that if everybody's licking butthole until they're 23, playing this whole elite overproduction game with school, like creating jobs for nothing. You don't create jobs just to hire people, you create jobs to do things to make the uh, society better. And So people go, oh yeah, but school makes society better. No, no, it makes people retarded. Just look at the president. And so if you just ask people to take the test and it becomes common knowledge to take the test, and whoever does take the test has uh, free reign to tell anybody else to take the test, you know, without having to get, like, sued. Yeah, then everybody can, can eventually take the test. And then at least not people in power and people who want to be leaders. You'd have to have Donald Trump take the test and imagine how hilarious that would be. Because Donald Trump thinks that Colorado borders with Mexico, that they had, that the um, English were bombing our airports and our, to win the... the our war of uh, independence 250 years ago. Um, and uh, what else does he think? Uh, uh, yeah, well, there was a whole bunch of statements that he made. So you can't have you know leaders that dumb or else we make, uh, we're gonna die. You know, everybody will die. We'll turn into fascism. So, um, but uh, yeah, and so also it has to become though, you know, people need to live. So if you make it your job, then you spend 100% of your time learning and then and then you'll be one of the first people who knows everything, who can just recite history and then you know, you can have also the other um, political insights and into the future. 
and then uh, and then it just spreads and then you because you see how easy it is and then everybody does it but the people who do it in the beginning really should have it as a job like me I should have it as a job so they they should be paid to do it right um after, so if I if anybody like demonstrates that they've done it for like three months they've done six versions every two weeks for three months six versions consistently then they get the green light to get um, hired by the uh, fascist dictators who have um, hundreds of millions of billions I guess it's billions billionaires now to spend uh, just like 50 like I think a uh, middle class would be 50,000 bucks so you just give the person 50,000 bucks a year and their only job is to take the test and to ride their bike and get super fit so uh, that's what people want I guarantee you um, they don't want to be sitting in school in fact I, I was, you know, in these like bumfuck schools, uh, all the losers at their bike teams, they all want, they all think that they're going to be professional bike racers. They all want to be a professional bike racers. None of them want to get a job. I was over at Fort Lewis and like none of these, all these people, they learned how to ride a bike like the year beforehand. Like I did the bike race there. I did one of the bike races, the first bike race of the year. I just rode away from everybody and I was going to finish like 10 minutes ahead of everybody, but I got a rock embedded in my eye and I couldn't see for the last five hours miles so they finally like they barely caught me right at the end but like this little, the little breakaway losers but um yeah and those guys they're like yeah we're, we don't want to do the big 220 mile ride around because we all think we're going to go pro we all think we're going to be bike racers and and the more riding you do the, the worse bike racer you are so no no the more riding you do the better bike race you are and the more studying you do the smarter you are so but anyways i was talking to this one girl i was like how come you don't want to do a thing oh, i want to be a bike racer really i should have told her that's not going to not riding isn't going to make you a bike racer. It was like, so you want to be pro? She goes, yeah, well, who doesn't everybody? Really? So all these people who suck on bikes and are afraid to ride 200 miles, they think they're going to be a pro. So, yeah, the, the deluded people want to be pros. The problem is you would have to, they would have to do the, uh, the actual work. But then you could be a pro. You're actually a pro. You're pros to ride all the time. You know, I don't know if what these people meant was pro so that they could be famous or something, or if pro as in they just ride all the time. <laughs> Because if everybody's a pro, nobody's going to be famous, but they're all going to be pro and be riding all the time. And so the way that you make it work is incorporate the bikes, the, uh, that's why I call it bike school, the test into the, uh, into the equation. And then you have then um, been sponsored. So after I do this for three months, you know, and I say, hey, look how smart I am. Isn't this a new way? And look how fit I am. Look at how it, it turned me around. Then people have to pay me. I want my 50000 bucks a year. I need to have enough money to buy to get out of my $30,000 HELOC loan, uh, buy a gravel bike, mountain bike, which I don't have either of those. I have like a 35, 40-year-old mountain bike. Um, travel to the races. I want to go to triathlons. Um, and then uh, not have to have a roommate. You know, be like a member of society economically. In three months. And, uh, and I would be sponsored by the rich people, but not by like a government program. Because it's the rich people who, the billionaires, obviously, they're called billionaires, they have too much money and the government doesn't. So so you could pre create the money for the people by the billionaires giving us the money and shutting down the schools and then the government would eventually give us the money when the billionaires run out of money and the school system gives us the money. <laughs> so that was the explanation. Um, I will watch this again so I can put all the timestamps. If you don't have that much time, you just want to see what I'm talking about. And... Um, and uh, and then watch my video. The next video I upload after this was my very first test. I scored 154, which makes me happy. And that will inspire me to try to do better next time. And, and then I'm showing everybody that I'm doing it, maybe inspire other people or even learn. Because we're also teaching each other. Different people learn from different styles. Different people learn from different types of people. You know, maybe somebody wants to learn from like a certain type of a person. Want to learn, learn a lesson or a certain, or do the test from a certain type of person. They just watch the test. But the really cool thing about it is if it exposes people. If you don't know anything, you're just going to be like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, then they get exposed and then they, they have to drop out of their, they have to drop, like get fired or and resign from their overly powerful jobs that they have. Like if a college a president can't do the test, he has to get fired. And then he can just become a normal person doing bike school. And they're probably better for them anyway, because they get to ride more. Um, and, uh, and the people who do well can go up. But also you can see uh, where people's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, skill levels are and like where their uh, value system is based on the type of stuff that they talk about and you know it exposes you on how fair you are how honest you are how you grade yourself um, if what type of person you are if you're high verbal you know if you just spout out a bunch of words because there's different techniques you can use to do well at the test you can spout a bunch of words out 
and then hope that one of them sticks. Or you could think and then get one because you thought about it and then you got it that right. And uh, so it kind of overlaps, you know, like in a bike race, maybe the sprinter would win because he made stayed with the pack or maybe the climber will win because there's like a big climb for the end. Same thing with learning a race like this or do, winning a competition like a bi-weekly history test. Maybe like somebody will do score better because they just talk faster and they just spewed out more because because making a wrong guess doesn't give you negative points. All it does is embarrass you, you know, to the people who watch. That's enough of a, of a policing for people to not just say too much. Because if you're like babbling and you say something that's ridiculous, like Christopher Columbus in the year 420 found America. It's like, you think Christopher Columbus in 420 found America, moron, you know? So then, but but the more you talk, the more uh, chances you are of maybe getting one right. And so there's, uh, so it'll motivate people in every way just to do the best and to make themselves the uh, most uh, intelligent with history and everything else as they can. Because history is the base of all the other subjects. So, um, and then, you know, then the cream rises to the top. And so, um, yeah, in six months I will, I was thinking about asking Elon Musk for money cause he calls everything X and I think that's funny cause I'm a stoner. So I could call it like the X test. We could call it X team. I ride on the X bike. I'm X racer. You know, he could be X sponsor, you know, and we X it up all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, um, his brother actually lives here in town. I know where his brother lives. Not like I'm going to knock on his door, but. So it's only a couple blocks up. Um, um, so um, uh, that's basically me explaining. And so once I get the money, you know, or maybe I won't get the money because I'm not mainstream enough. But then somebody else could do it the way that I do it, and then they could get some money to that, and then somebody else would met would met it, would uh, um, motivate somebody else, and then it grows up, and then we all shut down schools, get the money to build the robots to plant the trees. So. That's it. Um, uh, um, and so those are going to go on my main channel. And then I'll start to do also speaking videos on my channel too because I'm sobering up now. I'm having asthma attack right now. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and also the book reviews. That's the other part of it is when you ride your bike, you listen to a book, and at the end of the day, you do a book review. Because that's not nearly as taxing on your brain, as exa exhausting, as taking the bi-weekly history test. And it, and you can learn, teach yourself by doing it, um, prove that you did it, get smarter, and then teach other people by doing those book reviews. So I'm going to try to uh, get, uh, ease into that too. But I'm happy that I got started quick, right at the beginning of September, about the same time I was riding my bike. <coughs> <coughs> and so this actually, it, met, it, it mixes in with physical. You can look at my website. Um, so you would do the bi-weekly history test and the book reviews in combination with whatever sport you choose and you have five. Uh, fighting, these are all historical sports. Fighting, swimming, running, um, rowing, and then cycling. <laughs> cycling is an, um, historical, but it's, it's like replaces horses. So it is historical. Same kind of thing, same range, same speed, same, you know. So um, yeah, that's it. That's me uh, explaining it and giving you this is the beginning of the new world, um, and um, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Good luck. I hope you do it. Um, don't forget that you have the license to ask anybody. Like you can, you know that saying, "Don't let your friends choose you; choose your friends." Um, that's who you get to be when you're a bike schooler. Uh, don't be friends with anybody who doesn't want to do the test. Only if they take the test, and then you get to ask anybody you want to take the test. So you can call up. The president of your local college, the mayor, um, the most the cockiest rich guy, anybody, and they don't have a leg to stand on. And you can record the conversation if they get mad. It doesn't matter because you're backed up by the authority of bike school. All right. Good luck.